devil sends the beast with wrath because he knows the time is short. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its number is 666. Daddy, where did the blue side go? Many people would be shocked and amazed to discover that their elected government would intentionally spray toxic compounds into the air over their heads. Tens of thousands of people from the state of Maine to the country of New Zealand have documented this airborne spraying program. Thousands of photographs now exist on the internet detailing the blatant and direct assault on our breathable air by the Air Force. The evidence, as we shall discover, speaks for itself. is it happening? Who is spraying us? What is in the chemtrail soup that we are helplessly ingesting? Normal jet contrails are formed above 30,000 feet and last only a few seconds. Normal contrails are created very rarely and are caused by the intense heat thrown off of jet engines as they climb towards their cruising altitudes. Designed to appear as normal contrails, chemtrails, on the other hand, do not occur from the mixture of engine heat and water molecules at high altitude. They usually occur between 12,000 and 20,000 feet, and photographic evidence clearly demonstrates 
that these emissions are coming from spray nozzles attached under the wing near the engines or extending from the rear of the plane. As these satellite photos clearly demonstrate, chemtrail spraying has been designed to occur in such a way as to make them appear as normal cloud cover moving into a given area. The government is trying everything to hide them from the public. They use on-air weather personalities to explain the cause of daily barrage of chemtrails. The weather satellite pictures used on regular TV channels are washed electronically to remove the obvious line patterns. But as you can see, by going to the NOAA's site and obtaining raw feed prior to release to subscriber stations, there is much in the clouds over the world that does not belong there. Studies done by independent laboratories indicate that the following elements can be found in chemtrails as well as in our rainwater. One scientist in California, using the proven NASA technology of resonance imaging, verified these elements as well as many others. It has been found that polymer fibers are used as a binding agent for the desiccated red blood cells. These blood cells are peppered with pathogens known to be harmful to human health. Over a three-year period starting in 1999, researchers have discovered a veritable shopping list of these pathogens in increasing strength. Many doctors and hospitals have, since 1996, indicated that death and illness of their patients from unknown airborne ailments has increased a whopping 3,000% over previous years. It would appear by these facts that the evidence indicates a starting of the chemtrail spraying program since about 1987 in various test regions in the southwest and full-blown chemtrail activity against the citizenry since 1996. Try this interesting test yourself. Go through the photos of you and your family as far back as you can and see if you can find any chemtrails in these pictures. One of our producers has found photographic evidence as far back as 1984. National Geographic magazine, well known for their excellent outdoor photography, shows the appearance of chemtrails in that same year. A perusal of back issues from your local library of any outdoor magazine, such as Field and Stream, will show chemtrails over U.S. cities as early as the mid-1980s. Why are we being sprayed with these chemicals? To what purpose? Much speculation has been spent on the reasons. The Air Force has undertaken a multi-year program spanning several years, ranging from protection from the sun, reducing global warming, weather modification, to population cold. Despite numerous attempts by thousands of concerned people, to get answers from the Air Force and the government, and various senators. No information is yet forthcoming from those responsible for this, certainly the greatest visible crime against humanity the planet has ever seen. Let's look at each of these theories in turn. One of the first theories to appear by disinformation artists was that chemtrails were here to help us, 
from the damaging effects of the sun's rays. At first blush, this appears to be plausible, but it does not explain the well-documented sprayings of aircraft mainly over large population centers, while ignoring obvious hot spots like barren deserts that might deserve such constant daily spraying. This explanation also doesn't cover the desiccated red blood cells loaded with harmful pathogens. This theory was further weakened when it was discovered that much of the spraying happens to occur at night under the cover of darkness. Clearly, protection from the sun's rays is simply misinformation dangled to those who are chemtrail aware so that they would go back to sleep. Another lie foisted upon chemtrail researchers is the oft-told pattern of global warming. The idea presented is that the globe is overheating and that chemtrails are the answer, causing a decrease in temperature. This hopeless fib is easily destroyed by the following facts. Chemtrails are sprayed at night when the sun is beyond the horizon. The chemical makeup of chemtrails belies this and other theories. What do anthrax, spores, and lupus have to do with deflecting heat from the planet? If saving the planet from global warming were the actual goal of chemtrails, why hasn't the government come forward to use this as a publicity coup? They could certainly use some good press, and who isn't for saving the planet? Yet another idea presented is that our and other countries have gone over the edge and are playing God with the weather. Although there is a good indication that there might be aspects of the chemtrail program that lend itself to weather modification, it still does not fit all the facts. In fact, if changing the weather via chemtrails were the answer, why the secrecy, the lies, the cost which must run annually into the billions of dollars worldwide? Why then would the government feel it necessary to add harmful desiccated red blood cells to the mix? Cloud seeding has been successfully demonstrating using silver iodide particles since the 1950s. If changing the weather were the reason, why are there no harmless silver particles showing up in the lab test and in the resonant imaging? Again, this appears to be yet another lie unleashed upon chemtrail researchers to get them thinking and looking the other way. The last theory is so heinous in conception and execution that we dare not mention it except for the bizarre reality that it fits all the known facts regarding chemtrails. Let's look at those facts now. Fortunately, we have some four years of intense study into the problem of chemtrails and the following facts are not disputed. For reasons that will shortly become apparent, given the data collected, we know the following. Fact. Chemtrails are loaded with pathogens deadly to the human organism. Fact. Chemtrails are definitely aimed at the major population centers, though even the back country of America, Australia, and other areas of Europe receive chemtrails. Certainly not with the intensity and frequency of, say, Los Angeles or New York. Fact. Much of the spraying occurs at night. Fact. Chemtrails contain various heavy metals such as titanium, aluminum, barium salts, and other toxic metals. Fact. Most of the spraying is carried out by NATO air forces in their respective countries. What can we deduce from these facts? Very little. Some say that the presence of pathogens in chemtrails might be some kind of mass inoculation. Health professionals dispute this view by revealing that the fact that an overburdened immune system constantly fighting multiple infection vectors coupled with dozens of varying types of harmful viruses and bacteria causes the immune system to actually become less effective making it, over the long term, unable to fight off even the most common of infections, colds, and flus. 
This perception fits with the experiences we have all been feeling over the last few years. Listlessness, depression, a weakened health system, aching joints, reaction to airborne particles, and so on. The theory of mass immunization, also disputed by microbiologists who say that you cannot vaccinate against bioterrorism, as there are far too many possible millions of potential strains and variants that can be quickly made up, making vaccination moot. now known as the Gulf War. Archival satellite images of the period clearly show a dedicated spray program against Iraqi soldiers who have reported the same symptoms then as many Americans are now reporting. Dizziness, allergic reactions never before experienced, shortness of breath, a lethargic depleted feeling of hopelessness, as can be seen two pictures shown here. Whatever was aimed at the soldiers of Iraq in 1991 is currently being aimed right now at millions of people each and every day across the globe. Filmmakers have captured without realizing it Countless examples of aerial spraying. The following films indicate a massive multi-billion dollar program. In fact, even print art put out in magazines have chemtrails in them. The video game Pool Borders 2000 has chemtrails in their background. Researchers have gone to great lengths to contact dozens of senators and congresspersons, as well as the military, to no avail. In addition to seeking out answers from our elected leaders, which have proved fruitless, there exist petitions signed by thousands of people worldwide, which have been sent to various government leaders. These petition signers include scientists, school teachers, police officers, Veritably every profession and discipline has observed this phenomenon and, and has demanded answers. None so far are forthcoming. Again, the government's response to this has been silence or denial that chemtrails exist, the usual answer being that these are normal contrails. Dozens of letters exist on the internet from congressmen and women denying chemtrail activity. The Environmental Protection Agency has flatly declined air test samples sent into them. Chemtrails affect everything and everyone on the planet. The materials present in chemtrails can be found in our water tables, our hair, the clothes we wear, the food we eat. We must now know just what is going on in our skies and why. The government, your government, is blatantly lying about its spraying at citizens. Many feel that chemtrails are in reality a binary population elimination weapon. Stage one of this weapon is to pass various pathogens into the human body to weaken the immune structure. Repeated low-level assaults upon the immune system do not strengthen it. Rather, it becomes weaker from endlessly fighting one kind of infection after another. Hence the reason for so many pathogens in the chemtrail soup. This also completely explains why we are feeling weaker and sicker as the months go by, instead of healthier and stronger. 
Once this is accomplished and field reports indicate overall T-cell weakness attained, stage two would be the release either through vaccination or aerial dispersal of something like smallpox or anthrax, which would instantly kill the human host. If what is suspected of chemtrails is true, then we are experiencing something only the denizens of concentration camps have for years warned a sleeping humanity against. The fascist takeover of the world by corrupt leaders and the systematic elimination of unwanted sections of the population. Who chooses who dies? Who gets the vaccine against the poison and who does not? There is an old adage regarding the game of poker. If you cannot tell who the sucker is, then it's you. This axiom applies to the chemtrail phenomena as well. If you do not know why or what they are doing to us, then the purpose of chemtrails is probably against our well-being. There is, however, a very proven technology available to us that can thwart chemtrails. Inventor Wilhelm Reich is credited with creating the first known organ eliminator, or cloudbuster, originally designed to help bring in rain to areas plagued with drought. Don Croft, alternative scientist, researcher, and inventor, has succeeded in striking a blow against the ongoing chemtrails program that is destroying our country and enslaving its citizens. By utilizing the research of Wilhelm Reich, Croft has created a cheap, portable, and easy-to-build device that consistently destroys chemtrails and heals the atmosphere. The Reich Croft Chembuster is potentially one of the answers to the ongoing attacks by the forces of darkness. As these images show, chembusters, or as they are referred to by most people, cloudbusters, actually do the job of eliminating chemtrails. A cloudbuster is simply made or can be ordered via the internet. Though many speculate that the chemtrail problem has gone on for too long for there to be any kind of decisive resolution in the favor of humanity, we do not share that view. Awareness and knowledge are two keys to stopping this problem. The more that people are aware that chemtrails are overhead and in their lungs, the greater are humanity's chances that we might catch a break and some high-ranking official in government will come forward and stop the program. One should be very careful as well when investigating the chemtrail phenomena on the internet. Many chemtrail sites are actually run by government agents to spin the information given out on it or to suppress the real reason for chemtrails. Those sites that are pushing deep dunkers, character assassinations of online seekers of the truth, and who offer a vague chemtrails are here to modify the weather or chemtrails are sunscreen simply are disinformation sites aimed at misleading those who are becoming chemtrail aware. Tell your friends and loved ones. Show them the facts. Take them outside when the spraying is heavy and let them do their own thinking and research. A few may not be able to change the world, but a few million can. Good luck. Daddy, where did the blue side go? This clown runs when we're done with it. Starting bear on my V. That's a go. Reading all systems down the line. Your bird is singing loud and clear. All systems check out. Mandibular restraint. Interphalangic injection. Deltoid IM injection. Ah! 
Procedure completed. Takes care of him. <laughs> the bitches! He's wrapped. Knock him out till showtime. Seven News at five. You've heard of IV chips and pets. Well, imagine having your entire medical history embedded under your skin. Fox's Dr. Steve Salvatore takes a look at the Verichip. She had a new device called the Verichip, a computer chip about the size of a grain of rice placed under her skin. The Verichip is a device in which we have programmed into it a number. A, a, a regular serial number which is matched to a database, a secure lockdown computer database. That database, database okay. contains Molly's entire medical record. Okay, yep. that's it. So how did it go? It's a piece of cake. It, uh, there's virtually no pain. The goal of the program is to be in every hospital nationwide. All patients would automatically get scanned to see if they have a Vera chip as soon as they get to the hospital. But there's a problem. Different companies are competing for the same market with slightly different technologies. Critics say the Vera chip is the ultimate invasion of privacy. It's like Big Brother gone awry. No one can go into your computer or your chip to find out your information. You have to have a code and a, and a password. And microchip technology is moving very fast. For example, there are newer chips already available on the market that can update your medical history. It can actually erase data from a chip and replace it with new data. Remember the sponge contraceptive? Well, it is sponge-worthy again.